Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. To perform an adequate radiographic examination, the radiographs must be uh, current, a year old or less is preferable. Uh, in addition to the routine uh, perusal of the x-rays for pathologies, we'd like to focus our attention on the uh, portions of the x-ray which are going to be, be helpful in determining our treatment plan from, from the prosthetic viewpoint. First of all, we should look at the general alveolar support of the patient and we see that there is some bone loss in the molar area. As we go forward we see bone loss in the anterior area and this patient has had periodontal disease but if we look at the densities of the bone we can see that this periodontal disease has been arrested for the time being. We can see some, we can see some uh, cortical bone interproximally being formed. So the disease process is, is, is not active at this time. In the mandibular arch, the arch which we are concerned with, starting in the edentulous area, we see that the terminal abutment has had moderate bone loss and then coming forward we see to the anterior in the incisor area there has been a degree of bone loss a couple of millimeters and generally it seems that this bone loss is less than is shown in the maxillary arch going all the way across now to the abutment the remote abutment, the molar abutment, which would be, and we see that there is only a moderate degree of bone loss on, uh, on this terminal abutment. So we have two, on both terminal abutments, moderate degrees of bone loss. There has been an, an active periodontal condition in this patient at one time, which now seems to be uh, arrested. Now, more specifically, we'd like to show the residual ridge, the radiograph of the residual ridge of this patient, and we see that uh, there is a slight imperfection in the cortical plate overlying the ridge, but surely there has been uh, no really recent extraction in this site, so we don't have to uh, expect a great deal of remodeling to take place. Uh, the edentulous area here seems to have no pathology in it. Uh, pathologies underlying the saddle areas of the partial dentures are of some concern and we should take a look at, at something uh, which resembles a pathology in the underlying area. This radiograph is from another patient but does illustrate an area of at least of tentative concern beneath the residual ridge. Uh, it appears to be an area of condensing osteitis, which may be a remnant or may be left behind after the molar tooth had been extracted. However, it could be uh, a root tip with uh, condensing bone around it also. We don't, do not know the history of the patient. Now, these areas are of concern in partial denture construction because the free end saddle is or a saddle area could overlie it and could stimulate it. If it were near the surface it may uh, be a problem. It may start to erupt or start to be symptomatic to the patient. Therefore a closely underlying root tip would probably be uh, it would be a good idea to treatment plan a surgical excision of the root tip. However, if it were deep, the root tip were left deep, it may not be uh, advisable to surgically remove it 
because it would leave a large defect in the saddle area of the partial uh, denture. So the pathologies underlying the residual ridge area are of concern to uh, partial denture construction. Now we should probably look more closely at the abutment tooth itself and its crown and root morphology. It's necessary to look very closely at the potential abutment teeth uh, during the radiographic examination. This tooth, the molar tooth, is the potential remote abutment for a class two uh, partial denture, uh, a class two removable partial denture. The molar, in this case, we should be examined for the routine uh, decay, should be examined for a disruption of the periodontal membrane, and should also be examined for any hairline fractures uh, which may be present in the root surfaces. Um, more specifically, we look to see that there is no periodontal involvement in the frication area, particularly. We want to see if the tooth is tilted at all, and in this case, it's, it's upright and in good alignment. Uh, we also look at the morphology of the root, and in this case, this first molar seems to have a nice uh, blunted root tip. The, it is not diminutive by any means. Uh, there has been some loss of periodontal support, but uh, minor. Uh, and there appears to be no recurrent decay, and the amalgam restoration that is present does have a minor imperfection at the distal margin, but this uh, will probably be altered during the preparation of the abutment teeth. Going to the abutment on the opposite side, the free in saddle uh, area, the bicuspid here, what we're looking what we're looking for is again any disruption of periodontal membrane, any decay, which there is of which there there is none on this particular tooth, and perhaps uh, a hairline fracture in the root. Uh, they're all negative on this particular patient. The root form is generally very good. It's, it's uh, a broad root, not spindly. It uh, has had minor bone loss, but crown root ratio is good. The, uh, the crown is small in comparison to the area that is embedded in the root. And I would say that this tooth has uh, favorable support. Now, uh, we should look, at, for comparison purposes, at some x-rays of another patient. These x-rays are from two different patients. Uh, the first thing we should look at is the nature of the root on this particular patient. In comparison, this is a spindly or a very narrow shaped root, much less uh, suitable for a single, utilizing a, as a single abutment tooth. We see also on this x-ray an area behind the tooth, distal to the tooth, which is uh, not well condensed, and interproximally also an area which is not well condensed, sort of, de or depicting to us that there is an active state of periodontal disease in this patient. Now, this situation could be remedied uh, by splinting these teeth, and possibly splinting these teeth would uh, strengthen the abutment uh, situation for the partial denture. It should be, though, evaluated with clinical judgments also as to what is opposing the, uh, these teeth. Is it a natural dentition or is it a complete denture? Uh, clinical judgments such as these enter into the picture. In comparison, this tooth is has a broad root, 
less periodontal bone loss, and also the bone seems to be uh, more calcified and more dense. We have a nice, nicely uh, calcified area over the alveolar crest, and we also have a, an area of condensing osteitis around the apex of this tooth. Now this is a reaction, uh, a favorable reaction to a, an excess load that has been placed on the tooth. I would say that this tooth is a, has a good uh, chance of, of success as a lone terminal abutment. It does have an open contact here, which would have to be closed with a restoration, but I see no need to split this tooth to this tooth, it, where in comparison, we certainly may consider splinting this tooth to this tooth to gain some uh, additional support. Now, all these factors from the radiographic examination have to come into play with clinical judgments made during the oral exam and from the survey of the diagnostic casts into which uh, uh, some thought must be put before coming up with a tentative treatment plan for the given patient. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu slash license.